of an ESPN Sonic Blockbuster. Game two of the Jimmy B Classic. What an outstanding matchup we have between the Fighting Illini of Illinois and the Baylor Bears. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, and Holly Rowe is with us as well. Tough as nails, a cancer survivor herself. Let's all do what we can to donate to the V Foundation in memory of the great Jim Valvano. Every dollar you donate goes directly to cancer research. You can find out more at v.org slash donate. Jay, let's start with Baylor, and let's start with one of the best guards in America in Jared Butler. Well, Jared Butler came back for his junior season, a, a top scorer for Baylor, all Big 12. There's almost nothing he can't do out there on the basketball court from an offensive standpoint. So good off the dribble, gets downhill. He's got NBA range on his shot and can take it himself. And he shot the ball extraordinarily well this season. 60% from the field, 7 of 12 from three. Let's go courtside. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, all of Baylor Nation was thrilled when Jared Butler decided to return for this season and not go pro. And he has got a goal that he wants to show to the NBA. They told him he's got to be more athletic, and he's doing that. Whether he's slashing to the basket, he's already got five steals to lead the team. He's doing a little bit of everything for this Baylor Bears team. But, Jay, I think what you hit on is the best. He's hitting shots 58% from three-point range. He's trying to show the NBA scouts he can be everything they want him to be. There's no question they're interested in him. He's one of the best guards in America, and this is one of the best combos in America. Ayo Desumu and Kofi Coburn. Ayo Desumu is a closer. There's nobody better in college basketball in the open floor, averaging 25 a game, almost eight rebounds, and almost seven assists. And a lot of those assists are going to Kofi Coburn, who was the rookie of the year last year in the Big Ten. He is a dominant force, and you talk about physically imposing. I'm afraid just looking at it. <laughs> we are ready for the tip of our Sonic Blockbuster. Doug Sermons, Keith Kimball, Ray Natili are the officials. It's Baylor and Illinois, two top five teams here in the early going. Ayu Desumu said before the game, this has a chance to be a legacy game, a statement game, playing a team and a program as solid as Baylor. This one's going to be a whole lot of fun as you look at the starting five for the Bears, led by that backcourt of Butler, Mitchell, and T. Desumu guarding Jared Butler to start the game. That's going to be a key matchup to see if Desumu could stay with Butler throughout the course of the game. And Desumu's got some help, not just Coburn, Trent Frazier, a great freshman in Adam Miller. DeMonte Williams, not a big offensive player, but he made a huge late three in the win over Ohio in Illinois' last game. And no surprise, Jay, I guess that Davion Mitchell figures to spend, they got switched off here, but he figures to spend a lot of time, don't you think, on Desumu? He will, but what a great wow. play by Vital. He's a guy that has an opportunity to be a, a national defensive player of the year candidate. All these guys that Baylor has can guard multiple positions, so they can switch on some of that weave action. You'll wind up on multiple players in this game. And the three a little bit short there for Butler, and back come the Illini. This is Miller out of Peoria, Illinois. Off to a great start, 18 a game, but a turnover leads to a run out for Butler. I think this is the best defensive perimeter in the country. Davion Mitchell is the headliner as far as perimeter defenders because of the pressure he can put on the ball, but they all have length, they're all athletic, and they play hard and together. And this team talks as well on the defensive end. One issue, Dan, defensively is, you know, they lost Freddie Gillespie. He made up for a lot of defensive mistakes, erased a lot of those. Yep. Mitchell driving into the paint. Ball is knocked away. Here come the Illini. Trent Frazier up and in. And Illinois is on the board. It's tied up at two. That's the one thing that Baylor cannot defend, and that's a run out. Davion Mitchell turned the ball over, and that gave Illinois a run out that you cannot defend when they're playing ahead of your defense like that. Mitchell with the Frazier trying to fight around some screens by Vital, and you'll have to work to get around some screens by Vital. He's a big guy and a physical guy. And the three will rattle out. Descended back the other way for the Illini. Look at that stutter step. Desumu's got so many different moves. Look inside. Coburn can't finish. 
And then is fouled. They called the second foul. They just didn't call the first one. Scott Drew, who tested positive for COVID a couple of weeks ago. Baylor had to change their schedule. Picked up a couple of games against Louisiana Lafayette and Washington in Vegas. But Drew did not coach those games. Associate head coach Jerome Tang did. But Drew is back and coaching the team in Indianapolis tonight. Well, you talk about some teams, how they play four guards around a big. Illinois plays four guards around a huge in Kofi <laughs> Coburn. <laughs> Brad Underwood, he, he likes his team. Fourth year, uh, third year, uh, fourth year, excuse me, in Champaign. And this is a team, you look at the Big Ten, fascinating league as it always is, but... You know, Illinois and Iowa, I think, Jay, generating as much conversation and, and with as much potential as anybody in the league. As well they should. But, I mean, the, the Big Ten is the best conference in the country this year. I don't think there's any question about that. Not only top to bottom, but I think at the at the very top. I mean, Michigan State, who just won in Cameron Indoor Stadium last night, is projected to be the number four team. What a block by Coburn. And a quick look ahead to Sumu, finds Miller, and the freshman misses the three. Miller is not shy, plays with a lot of confidence, and he can really score. Reverse no, tipped back out, and Baylor will get another possession. Adam Flagler is into the game. As Scott Drew has gone to his bench early, and he'll pick up an assist on the bucket by Butler. What a beautiful shot fake on the closeout by Trent Frazier. Just put him in the popcorn machine. That was a, a just a lovely floater that Jared Butler shot. Desumu not only tremendously skilled, he's a big guard as well. at 6'5", and he can really change speeds on you. Whose ball is it going to be? It'll stay with Illinois with six on the shot clock. Now take a look at this shot fake by Jared Butler. Makes the catch, gives a little shot fake, and Trent Frazier... Comes out to close out, just drives and attacks that closeout and able to stop short before getting to that charge attempt by Williams. That was just a beautiful play by Jared Butler. Another Illinois turnover. And this time the lay-in will go for Vital. All their offense coming off their, most of their offense coming off their defense so far. Well, that's going to be a theme throughout the course of the year. This is an excellent defensive team. You can see they switch. I mean, look at Mark Vital switching out on DeSumo and forcing him out near half court. Wide open three. Knocked down by Williams in Illinois, back within a point. Monte Williams. Williams, the son of the former Big Ten player of the year, Frank Williams with Illinois back in 2001. Left hand scoop, no good. The Illini have it, looking to take the lead. Frazier pulls up, wow. and a quick three will go down. The Illini on top. Trent Frazier was Illinois' top scorer before Io DeSumo stepped on campus. He's taken more of a complimentary role, but he can step out of that role and put points on the board in a hurry. Little hesitation, but too strong off the glass by Butler. Out ahead of the pack is Miller, and he runs it down in the corner. That was a heck of a rebound by Williams. DeSumo with a pull-up. And we're going to foul going against Coburn to take us to the first media timeout of the night. A good start between Illinois and Baylor. Trent Frazier feeling it with the transition three. Illinois with the early two-point lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Corona Extra. Find the fine life. Live la vida mas fina. And in part by the Queso Burger for just $3.99, only for a limited time. Are Next you time. serious, America? A year ago, they had a 23-game winning streak, finished 26-4 overall, 15-3 in the always challenging Big 12. There's the 23-game winning streak. It was ended very late in the season by Kansas. They were number one in the polls for five consecutive weeks. And this might be the most impressive one at all, as all. In a league as good as the Big 12, all five starters got some kind of all-conference honors. They would have been a one seed going into the tournament. No question. It was a dream season cut short by COVID. And, you know, three of those starters were on the all-defensive team in the Big 12. 
which shows how important defense is. Good little cross screen and a terrific play by Bajanashvili to knock that away. Georgie Bajanashvili into the game now, number 15 for Illinois, as Coburn has gone to the bench. That saved an absolute bucket, that little cross screen. Andre Curbelo, a freshman guard, is checked in for Illinois, number five. And a missed jumper there by Coleman Hawkins, as both coaches have gone to their benches a little bit more out of the timeout. Good pass. And a good shot fake as well. Floater off the glass, too strong. Some good looks for Baylor. In tight around the basket, but unable to finish. Look at Curbelo with the look away, and then the foul on the follow will send Hawkins to the free throw line. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, this is a totally different feeling in this building right now in this game than the previous two games I worked here. It's quiet. There are no fans here. But my goodness, this Illinois bench and the Baylor bench, they have been loud and raucous. I thank them very much. It's late at night, and they are bringing all the energy. It feels totally different in this building. Man, I got chills. I'm like, all right, let's go some basketball. Let's go, baby. Interesting. We love to see that energy and that noise. And again, these are two programs, Jay, with good reason are incredibly excited to see what this season could become. I think Holly was taking a shot at your play-by-play -play yeah. that you were putting her sleep. I felt that too. <laughs> you didn't feel she was talking about your of analysis? No. <laughs> <laughs> Typical. <laughs> you know, you mentioned Freddie Gillespie bought, gone for the Bears. He is... Now playing professionally, driving layup by Butler. Also, and very unfortunate, we should mention the name of Tristan Clark, who two years ago, a terrific player for Baylor, suffered a serious knee injury, didn't play much last year, and eventually decided just a couple of weeks ago, Jay, that he just wouldn't be able to continue playing basketball. Yeah, essentially retired. But one thing that Scott Drew told me a couple weeks ago on the phone is that, that Clark is happy now. It's great to see him smile, that all the stress that had worn on him is gone, that he feels supported and, and relieved. And he's working now to be a sports psychologist, just right. a, an outstanding young man. And glad he's doing well. Miss seeing him out on the court. High screen by Bajanashvili. Stepped out of bounds. Yep. Curbelo had that right foot on the sideline. Here's as good a stat as you will hear, I think, in college basketball. If you want to talk about the job, as you look at Brad Underwood, if you want to talk about the job that Scott Drew has done with Baylor, this is the 244th game under Drew where the Bears have been ranked. Prior to Drew getting to Baylor, they had been ranked in program history a total of two games. I mean, you talk about a guy who has taken a program to another level. Look at this feed, and Meyer with a reverse. Just a beautiful cut by Meyer. His defender turned his head, got right to the rim. That was an excellent finish. Bojanishvili with a wild one off the window, and back come the Bears. Yeah, when Scott Drew took the Baylor job, I think a lot of people thought he was nuts. But it was just too big of a rebuild and near impossible. And look what he's done in Waco. And they are picked preseason to win the Big 12. Picked ahead of Kansas. First time the Bears have ever been picked preseason to win the Big 12. Most wins in program history. Been ranked number one. Postseason almost every year. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, he's really the Chip and Joanna Gaines of basketball. <laughs> We, uh, we heard all about them when we were down there for game day last year, didn't we? Heard about them. We yeah. met them. That's true. Went to dinner at their place. Yeah. It was called Magnolia. It was great. That chocolate cake oh my. was life-changing. You know, that's a strong statement, but I think I'm with you. That I, was, I would yeah. crawl on my knees. To have, that wasn't even a slice. That was a, yeah. a wedge that couldn't fit in a large trunk. Yes. You know, we should say, coming up on the weekend, another incredible test for Baylor. They're getting one tonight. Guess who Baylor's playing on the weekend? Gonzaga. Mitchell trying to shake to Sumu. Got away with the walk yes. there. Meyer misses, and the uncontested follow there by the opportunistic Adam Flagler, a transfer from Presbyterian. Well, we're seeing some great shot fakes in this game. Up top.
up and slamming it home is Coburn, the assist to Curbelo. Coburn just in that dunk spot. And Curbelo, as soon as anybody helps on the drive, you just throw it up to Coburn, and it's an easy two. Do you have to be able to dunk to call it the dunk spot when you're standing there? No, it's just called the dunk spot. The people who stand there should be able to right. dunk, but oftentimes it may not be true. <laughs> Butler gets his own miss. Gets around Williams and lays it in. What a post move by Jared Butler. You can obviously score on the perimeter, but to be able to take a matchup into the post and make that kind of move, that's a big time scorer right there in college. Brad Underwood happy to see Curbelo out there running around looking okay. He rolled his ankle a few days ago, but looking fine. You mentioned Flagler being Presbyter from Presbyterian. You know the nickname of Presbyterian? Ah, uh, no, I think you got me. The Blue Hose. The Blue Hose. One word or two. Two. Jeez, did anybody know whether that was a charger block? It's like the referees made it up afterwards. Nobody got a call. <laughs> Timeout on the floor. Baylor leading Illinois by four. If you want to slow down the Illini, you got to keep the big fella out of the dunk spot. Because he can dunk. <laughs> At the other end, Butler down in the post. Bears by four. Key to Scott's family. His dad, Homer Drew, and his mother, Janet Drew, are both cancer survivors. They've both been going through a very difficult time fighting cancer. And his mom, Janet, has become my personal lymphedema expert. I have had a similar surgery that she had, and so she sends me little videos and tutorials about how to get my lymphedema down in my arm and get the pain out of my arm. And I just want to say a special loving thank you to Janet Drew. She is my personal cancer coach, helping me through a difficult time after my surgeries and a wonderful family And Scott Drew. He's so lucky to have both of his parents still with us. Uh, it's a very powerful story, Holly. Thank you very much. And I'm sure that Holly is an inspiration and a cancer coach to many other people. We mentioned off the top that Holly is a cancer survivor and uh, one of the toughest people we know. And it's great to have Holly on this event, as she has been with us the last couple of years. The Jimmy B Classic presented by Corona J, as big a night as we have on the calendar all season long. Yeah, and Holly Rose an inspiration to all of us mm -hmm. and always has been. Early on here in a game two and a three-point lead for Baylor. Back into the game now for the Illini as Adam Miller DeSumo will get a breather. A little weave up top. Butler over the top. And a foul is called on Coburn that will send Jonathan Chamwa Chachua to the line for the Baylor Bears, the transfer from UNLV. Well, this is the men's Jimmy V and the women's Jimmy V. The second game of the 19th annual Jimmy V Women's Classic will come your way Friday at 6.30 Eastern time here on ESPN. Number five, Louisville, and number 20, DePaul from Bubbleville at Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut. Just want to tell you, Dan, how proud I am of you for saying Jonathan Chamwa Chachua so well. I'm pretty proud of myself too. Most people go with everyday John. <laughs> That's what the, the team That's calls him because yeah. he brings it every day. That's right. I mean, you could go, well, you could just call him Chacha, right? It's Chamwa Chachua if you wanted to simplify it. Or you but could say everyday John. Everyday John. But I think between Chamwa Chachua and Georgie Bajanashvili. There are some uh, challenges here tonight, but we are up to the challenge, Mr. Billings. You certainly are. <laughs> I'm sticking with everyday John and occasional Jay. Okay. <laughs> and three times a week, Georgie. The drive by Curbelo, shovel pass, and Bajanishvili gets the roll. Good no call on that charge attempt by everyday John. There's no way that Curbelo's going to knock him down. And do we have an offensive foul? Yes, we do. Daviana Mitchell using that off arm to create a little space. Scott Drew wants an explanation. Yeah, we've praised, and rightfully so, the Baylor defense and the potential of this Baylor defense. But you know, Illinois plays with an edge on the defensive end. You know, they fly around, make plays, try to put discipline pressure on the ball. And I really like these young Illinois players, these freshmen. Well, one of them just found another. Curbelo to Miller. Miller misses the three. Bajanishvili with a rebound. Trying to find some room, and he couldn't underneath the bucket. 
And Mark Vidal is such a tough rebounder. Butler. Not there on the three. Boy, a couple of good blockouts underneath to allow Frazier to get that rebound, especially the one by Williams. The blockout doesn't show up in the stat sheet, but you can bet the coaches notice that kind of thing. When you don't block out, it shows up. Yes, that's true. <laughs> they call it an offensive rebound for the other team. Nice job on the spin by Bajanishvili. Illinois getting something going largely by its defensive intensity and this crew that's in the game for Illinois has really brought some energy on the defensive end. And away from the ball, it looks like a foul on Curbelo as Desumu's getting ready to come back in for the Illini. And Trent Frazier's got Jared Butler right now and Frazier is really a good defender. He's got a goal. He wants to be Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year this year. That's going to be a tough one to tough one to win. But he's got a junkyard dog mentality yeah. on the defensive end. That league is going to be an absolute bear this season. Vital on the offensive glass, and we get a foul going against Williams of Illinois. Yeah, that was a good call. I, I think if Vital had made that shot, they wouldn't have blown the whistle. That's why the whistle was late. But there was definitely contact on the shot. It's an interesting spot, Jay, with a lineup Baylor has in vital most often plays, say, the four, the power forward. Illinois, Brad Underwood often goes with four guards. So somebody, in this case, Williams, and Williams is a strong guy, but Mark Vital's at a whole other level of strength. Yeah, Williams is really strong. Yeah. He's just smaller. Yeah. And it's not like, you know, Vital's a, a really tall guy. He's only about 6'5", but he's got really long arms. He's got the arms of a 6'10 guy. And he always goes after the ball with two hands. Just a big-time offensive rebounder. Not a good free-throw shooter, but he made them both right there. As Flagler checks back into the Bears will go smaller now. But Vital was so good against Washington. Remember, we started the season last year where Washington upset Baylor in Alaska, but he had 15 rebounds against the Huskies, seven of them on the offensive end. And also had three blocks and four assists. Just played a total four game. Baylor 2-0 on the season, wins over Louisiana Lafayette and Washington, both in convincing fashion. Illinois blowing out NCA and C in Chicago State, and then a narrow two-point win over Ohio, a nail-biter of a game. Miller finds a little space, knocks down the baseline jumper. This kid can score. They're at 28 against North Carolina A&T in their opening game and Illinois couldn't run anything on that possession but just when the ball was reversed he made a play the lefty Adam Miller I really liked the way he plays here comes to Sumu so dangerous in the open court floater is short though and it'll be out of bounds to the Illini well, to Sumu makes so many of those shots where he goes off like an odd foot but look, look at Baylor's just flying all over the place. A nice little handoff. And Bajanishvili just able to give a little bit of space to Miller so he can take that shot in rhythm. Miller, another, another outstanding prospect from Peoria. What a block in the corner by Butler, but eventually the Illini recover, and they will take the lead. Last two buckets have essentially come off broken plays where Baylor's played great defense. Just had not finished the possession. Well, a really small lineup in there for Baylor right now with the vital in as the five-man, along with four perimeter players. They might be small, but, man, they can play low. Yeah. These guys can use leverage. Davion Mitchell, the redshirt junior, the former Auburn transfer, he steps into a three. That dude, Mitchell, is quick on quick. Miller pulls up, rattles it home. Plays with nice pace, doesn't he? Yeah. A great demeanor on the court. And oodles of confidence. What is an oodle? It's a, it's a metric thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> it's a metric system. <laughs> 
I know you'll find this odd, folks. We don't rehearse those bits at all. <laughs> it was like Hugh Grant saying, oops a daisy in Notting Hill. <laughs> We got a good one. Number two, Baylor. Number five, Illinois. Close as expected here for the second game of the Jimmy V Classic. Oodles and freshman was injured early on. He came back, but wasn't quite the same. I thought Nemhard's play was the difference in winning and losing for Gonzaga. How about these backcourts? We've talked about Teague and Mitchell and Butler, and they've got guys off the bench, too. Flagler for Baylor. How about Dusumu and Frazier? and Williams and Miller for Illinois. And how about the combination that Mark Few can put out there for Gonzaga with Suggs, Nemhart, Ayayi. I mean, these are three of the very best backcourts of the country we've seen tonight. Yeah, and, uh, no surprise as a result of those backcourts. These are four of the best teams in the country yeah. and the highest rated. Bajanashvili running the floor. Good things happen when the big man runs the floor. Mark Vidal thought he got fouled on the other end, was essentially out of the play, so Illinois could play five on four. Kofi Colbert on the bench with two fouls for Illinois. So the Illini have to adjust without him. Bajanashvili, who can play alongside Colbert occasionally, but generally now has pretty much become the backup to Colbert, but he's getting some good minutes here tonight. Tell you what, Adam Flagler can't score, man. Jacob Grandison is into the game as Vital is called for the foul. One more look at the Flagler bucket. Yep. One of the interesting things, Dan, about Illinois' defense is, you know, for the first couple of years, they were just like it was at Oklahoma State and Stephen F. Austin. They were pressing and trying to force a ton of turnovers. And you know, Brad Underwood basically had his guys look at the analytics and decided that in order to keep Kofi Coburn on the floor, they were going to have to play a different style of defense. They're more half-court oriented, more containment, still a lot of ball pressure, but not quite as much overplay. And it's really worked out. This is a very good defensive team. It's just a different style, not as frenetic and not forcing quite as many turnovers, but forcing more challenge shots and limiting teams to one shot. And one thing you know about a Brad Underwood coach team, and you could say this about a lot of programs in America, you're going to play hard if you play for Brad Underwood. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's from the Bob Huggins, you know, Frank Martin school of do what you're supposed to do, get on the midline, and if you're not there, there's no excuse. A couple of missed free throws in the Illini with the ball looking to take the lead. You know, Brad Underwood, he probably doesn't have this, but he's one of the guys that would. Like, one of the guys that would have a, a jar on his desk, an empty jar that says excuses on it. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you come into his office and <laughs> says, go ahead, yeah. put all your excuses in there. We'll talk about it later. DeSumo guarded by Vital. What a matchup this is. Look at Vital doing a really good job staying with him. Forces a miss, but the Illini get it back. And Davion Mitchell saying that Bajanishvili went over his back to tip that thing back out. And Frazier just whips a pass by Miller all the way out of bounds. Down at the other end of the court. That was unbelievable defense Mark Vidal just played on Ayo DeSumo. Guy his size sticking with him. Boy, because he allows you to switch just about everything on the floor when a guy can do that. Absolutely. Well, that's one where Vital switches out on you. Go, whoa, 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 whoa. Switch back. Come right. on, set a screen. Switch yeah. back. And again, he can be out there as the four. He can be out there as the five. But he can switch on to anybody. Look at, did you see what Vital did there? Just pushing Williams right out of bounds to try to get his teammate a layup. A lot of contact on that lob attempt. Bajanashvili with a nice move. One on one in the post. Taking everyday John into the lane so he could <laughs> drop step and went to that right hand even though he's a lefty. That was a beautiful move. He's got great feet. Boy, Holly wasn't kidding. Listen to the noise coming from the benches at Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Mitchell, high arcing three. 
And Shamwa Chachua misses a chippy. A lot of alliteration by you there. Thank you. I'm Shamwa uh, Chachua Chippy. <laughs> A lot of alliteration. A lot of alliteration. Anxious yes. anchors placed in powerful posts. <laughs> Stay with me, Jay. We got another half of basketball to go. That's from uh, Broadcast News. Yeah. Shot clock's at three. Miller sees it. In transition, Butler. No call. And something's going on with Vital. I believe. Probably call the timeout. I think you're right. Yep. 4.02 to go. Got a battle between the Illini and the Bears. Two point lead, Illinois. ESPN's exclusive presentation. Halftime game two of the Jimmy V Men's Classic presented by Corona with Jay Billis, Holly Rowe, who is on site in Indianapolis. Jay and I here at a studio in Charlotte. A two point lead for the Illini over the Bears. Butler. Around and out, got it back. Wide open, Flagler. Yes. The best time to shoot a three is after an offensive rebound because the defense is not thinking about playing defense anymore. And a great extra pass. And Adam Flagler is a, he's going to be a huge addition to this team with his ability to score. Yeah, as if they needed more weapons on the perimeter. They've got one in Flagler. Offensive rebound and then kicks it out the extra pass right here and you get a wide open step in three Now some people say the best time to shoot a three is in transition. I think it's after an offensive rebound. I think the analytics prove it Butler had a little more space than he thought he had hesitated just for a moment misses the runner with a rebound down to Miller that was excellent, I thought, analysis at halftime by our guys in the studio. But did you notice none of them said Jonathan Chamwet Chichua? Yeah, oh yeah, there's no chance they're going there. They just didn't have the <laughs> intestinal fortitude to go for it. We'll, we'll hear a couple of everyday Johns at halftime. Davion Mitchell just yeah. took a shot. Gonna have to count all his chicklets after that one. Hope he's okay. Getting a little help up and hopefully all right. Yeah, just a little inadvertent. Yeah. Wrist shot to the mouth. It's the inadvertent ones that hurt the most. On the bench, but looking like he's all right with 3.01 to go in the first half, and his Bears up by a point. What do you think about the top of the Big 12? Baylor pick first, Kansas pick second. What are your thoughts on the league? I mean, the league's going to be great again. You know, obviously only 10 teams, and the... the Talent in the league is excellent. I, th I still think Baylor's the best team. You know, Kansas gutted out a win last night in a game that wasn't mm -hmm. particularly pretty, but they found a way to win. Yeah, and West Virginia, who we just saw lose, but a pretty tight game against Gonzaga. The Mountaineers are going to make some noise in the league for sure. It's just going to be hard for any league to match the power of the Big Ten. I just think it'll be interesting as we go down the road, assuming we can get all these games in as scheduled, you know, how the how it's going to be processed when the top four teams in the Big Ten start beating each other up, yeah. and you know we talked about you know Iowa, Wisconsin, uh, Illinois, Michigan State. Great feed from Desumu to Bijanishvili. Bijanishvili has been so energetic in this first half. He's got to have double figures by now, doesn't he? Yep, he is into double figures, getting some minutes and playing well with Colbert on the bench with a couple of fouls. Smooth move by Macy Oteague at the other end. Macy Oteague is a long arm defender that can also score, averaging about 18 a game. 
You know, Jay, another Big 12 team we should have mentioned, Texas. They beat North Carolina today. Shaka Smart's team is off to a great start this year. I'm headed down to Austin on the weekend as the Longhorns will host Villanova. Really looking forward to seeing both of those teams in person. Well, they've got great size, and Matt Coleman hit a huge shot to win that game against Carolina as time was going out. But Jericho Sims has really improved. And Greg Brown is a stud. And I love Shaka Smart's new do. Of course you do. Although he, he's out of the bald brotherhood now. Yeah. Frank Martin in, Shaka Smart out. <laughs> Feels like a win for Shaka, to be honest with you. But <laughs> how about Bajana Shvili knocking down the three? Bajana Shvili had a difficult season last year, but he has come back this year and has had some really good moments, and this is the best he's played in a year and a half. I mean, he's been fantastic in this first half. And Brad Underwood always knows if Cobert gets in foul trouble, he's got a very experienced, reliable player he can put in there in his place. Stretch four that's really good in pick and roll situations. Great feet and very, very skilled. But he's gotten, he's gotten stronger. You know, he, he had lost some weight and he's put some of it back on. He, he looks a lot better. He's going to get a breather now. Tomorrow we'll have a Legends Classic doubleheader on ESPN at 7 o'clock Eastern time. It'll be UConn taking on USC and then Florida and Boston College. Both games coming from Bubbleville at Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut. I, I don't know about you. It just feels right that UConn is back in the Big East playing basketball. Yeah, so. it, it makes sense. I mean, it was they didn't have a whole lot of choices. Uh, they, UConn wanted to go into the ACC after the old Big East kind of broke up, and the best they could do was the American. And they were trying to make it in football, but I'm glad they're back in the Big East, and I know they are too. The, the rivalries make more sense, and the games make more sense for basketball. That's really what UConn is, the basketball school. Wow, that's a high degree of difficulty there by Miller. Can't knock the shot down, and back come the Bears. Mitchell using the screen from Vital, and why wouldn't you? And then a rejection by Coleman Hawkins. So much good young talent on this Illinois team, and they're putting them in there against a, an experienced Baylor team, and they are making plays. The freshman from Sacramento getting some minutes. Look at the length, look at the rejection. And we got a good one going between Baylor and Illinois. Sacramento, the capital of California. I love my bike. Think about the moments you've been missing. The small ones you've been dreaming about. The ones you couldn't be more ready for. And even the ones that take you by surprise. These are the moments you'll remember. The ones that are impossible to forget. To new memories, Hilton and our family of hotels. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Holly Rowe, game two of the Jimmy V Classic, Illinois and Baylor. A one point lead for the Illini with 41 seconds to go in the first half. About what you expected from these two teams so far tonight? Yeah, tough defense and playmakers. Uh, really impressed. Yeah, you've seen them on film, but really impressed with the freshman for Illinois. I mean, the present is bright for Illinois, but the future equally bright. Shot clock inside 10. Frazier loses it. And the Bears have it with numbers. Butler with a runner. Yes. But just too much dribbling by Frazier. He tried to get a little two-man game going with Tasumu, and Tasumu slipped it. But he never got the ball. Closing seconds of the half. Williams. Partially blocked by Meyer, I believe, and we will go into halftime at a game two with Scott Drew's Baylor Bears holding a one-point lead over Illinois. In spite of the fact that Georgie Bajanashvili 
playing absolutely outstanding basketball for the Illini. 13 points, very efficient. He is leading the way for Illinois, but it's Baylor with a one-point lead going into the break in Indianapolis. And Scott Drew is standing by with Holly Rowe. Well, Coach Drew, a very interesting game back and <laughs> forth. Their big men are hurting you guys a little bit right now. What can you do better inside? Well, they're doing a good job getting position, and uh, we're letting them get too deep. Uh, um, uh, uh, pressure on the on the perimeter will help make those passes a little tougher inside. But uh, credit them. They're doing a good job getting position, and uh, we got to adjust and uh, do a much better job with ball pressure and uh, fighting them early so they don't get those deep post-ups. Where do you think you can really concentrate offensively right now? We've seen a little bit of Jared. We've seen a little bit of other guys, but where do you want to really focus? I think both teams have been out of sync offensively, and everything is rushed. Uh, um, so I think uh, second half, both teams, uh, whoever can settle down and uh, do a better job uh, uh, executing offense and taking high percentage shots and things that uh, uh, you practice in practice. All right, thank you, and good to see you back, Coach. So glad you're hey, It's doing great well. to be back. Thank you. Although them turnovers made me want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Drew and the Baylor Bears with a one-point lead on Illinois halftime. Got a good one. Seth Greenberg, LaFonso Ellis, Reese Davis, take it away. All right, Dan, we'll be in. ESPN Feast Week presented by Lowe's and the Jimmy V Classic presented by Corona. We have had some great plays here. Baylor's Butler off the glass. Baylor leads at 31-30 over Illinois and Georgie. Bishana Shivili, really great performance in the first half. 13 points in the first half coming in off the bench. And this has been your sonic blockbuster. Illinois Baylor in our late night nightcap, a double header. The Bears up by one as we get ready to take on the second half here. He sat out most of the first half with some foul trouble, but Kofi Coburn coming back in now for Illinois to start the second half. We'll see if he can get going. Just two points in that first half for the Illinois big man after some foul trouble. Sonic Blockbuster starts out our second half. And Frazier for Illinois. Brad Underwood's team really been terrific in the first half, killing Baylor on the glass, 25 to 18 in that first half. Nice defense from Butler, trapping them in the corner. Vital on the ball right now. Miller with a deep shot, no. Rebound Illini, and they put it back. Williams on the putback. And Illinois takes the lead, 32-31. This Baylor four-guard lineup has to get some work done on the glass. Missing Freddie Gillespie, who was such a force in the rebounding last year for the Baylor Bears. Butler thought about a deep three, no. Inside the paint, looks for help. Mitchell with a nifty move, passes off to Butler, who takes the deep three this time, no. Vital can't clean it up, but he is fouled. And joining us now, Dan Schulman and Jay Billis. Thanks for joining us, guys. Holly, great job again. Uh, we are obviously battling some technical issues between the site in Indianapolis and where Jay and I are here in the studio in Charlotte. And Holly has saved the broadcast not once but twice. Has done some play-by-play -play in both halves. Welcome back. One-point lead for Illinois very early in the second half of this one. Wait. Illinois racking up some fouls. Kofi Coburn picking up his third and then right off the inbounds. A quick foul against Macy O.T. Leading scores in the game, Georgie Bajanishvili has 13 for Illinois. Jared Butler leading Baylor with 10 as Teague is at the line now for the Bears and leaves that first free throw a little bit short. Bajanishvili was most of Illinois' offense in the first half. At 13 points, he was 6 of 8 from the field. And Io DeSumo only had 3 points was one of six. Baylor switched out on him. He had a bunch of different guys guarding him, but really couldn't get any open looks at the basket and couldn't get to the rim. 
And he's got one of the best defender, perimeter defenders in the country on him into Mitchell, although now they switch off a little bit out on the perimeter. They're basically switching every screen in yeah. exchange. Including Vital, who did some incredibly impressive things defensively in the first half, to no one's surprise. How about the long jumper off the glass by Bajanashvili, and he's laughing like he didn't mean to bank that in. Well, Baylor was so concentrated on Desumu and his drive baseline. Bajanashvili was able to just loop behind. He was wide open, took his time. I don't know if he wanted to bank that, but... Had a big smile on his face going down the court. Two-point lead, Illinois, early in the second half. Game two of the Jimmy V Men's Classic, presented by Corona. In and out for Butler. Look at the rebound for Vital right over the top of Williams. And Flo Thamba gets the roll. That was a big-time rebound because Williams had a body on Vital, just couldn't block him out. Bajanashvili runs down the loose ball, now dives for it. And we got a foul call going against Baylor and Thamba. Is it just me or the way Illinois' uniforms are designed with the eye on the back of their shorts? It looks like all their shorts are on backwards. I know. I thought the same thing. You and I have way too much free time on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> People are out there solving real-world issues, and you and I think their shorts are on backwards. Don't tell me we're the only ones that are thinking that. <laughs> Off the glass, no good. You know what would be funny is if they, if every player on the team intentionally wore them backwards just to mess with people like us. <laughs> <laughs> they fell for it again back in Charlotte. Tied at 34. I think you're right. Oh, those are designed that way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know a proud tradition for this Illinois program Back in the 80s, Lou Henson had some great teams as Mitchell knocks down a three. They went to the Final Four in 1989. The Flying Illini, a great team. Bunch of guys, 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Kendall Gill, Nick Anderson, Stephen Bardo. Boy, they were good. And then, of course, some great teams in the early 2000s as well. Started with Bill Self and then Bruce Weber, and a team that made it to the national championship game in 2005. There's a lot of tradition in this program, but it's been a while since they were this good. Yeah, it's been a while since they've been to the NCAA tournament. They would have gone last year, but for COVID. But this team is is legit. This, this team has Final Four potential, Big Ten championship potential. Boy, that 89 team. Remember that Final Four? Yeah. With Michigan, Seton Hall. I think Duke was in that as well. That was in Seattle. Desumu again leaves it short. He's had a couple of runners where he's left the ball short. Well, he's been challenged on everything. Vital came over and got those long arms right in the way to challenge that. I'll tell you, both Butler and Desumu have all kinds of shots at their disposal, though. The three won't go down for Teague. He gets the rebound. Every day, John kept that alive. Come on, man, give me one shot, one shot you up before we go home tonight. Numbers for Illinois. Frazier, shovel pass back to Desumu. Got it. Got it in transition, able to step into that shot without it being challenged. And we are tied again. Don't get chippy about Chama Chichua. <laughs> What was your alliteration line? <laughs> a lot of alliteration. A lot of alliteration. Anxious anchorman yeah. placed in powerful posts. Frazier to DeSumo to lay it in, and Illinois has the lead. And that's the defense Illinois wants to play. Now they're playing with the edge that Brad Underwood wants to see. And Scott Drew wants a timeout. A quick 5-0 run. Led by Io DeSumo has given Illinois a two-point lead in Indianapolis over the Baylor Bears. Ian's fight against cancer has not stopped. And in fact, on a variety of levels, you can say it's more important now than ever. If you are able, please support cancer research by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of what you give goes directly to cancer research. 
Along with Jay Billis, Holly Rowe, I'm Dan Schulman. A two-point lead for Illinois over Baylor. In the early stages here in the second half. Baylor just getting some motion and movement to get the, the defense to move. And a terrific pass on the dive to Mark Vidal. He is so strong. He's not a big-time scorer, but he impacts the game in so many ways. On the glass, defensively. And Adam Flagler with the assist on the bucket that ties the game. Deflection bounces to Bajanishvili. And he's going to go up too strong off the glass. And what a battle there as Hawkins just takes it away from Flagler and gets Illinois another possession. And Coleman Hawkins is a good player now. He's going to be really good. Multi-positional defender and can score. Dusumu and Bajanishvili could not handle the pass. And we get a timeout on the floor, tied at 39 in the second half in Indianapolis. As UConn led by James Booknight, one of the more talented players in the Big East, he can really fill it up, taking on USC and then Florida Boston College in the nightcap. Both games coming to you from Bubbleville at Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut. Boston College has a really nice backcourt. A oh, beautiful play out of the timeout. They look to go to a lob after a timeout. And that was beautifully executed by Baylor. Mitchell to Chamwa Chachua for the dunk that gives the Bears a two-point lead. And now Mitchell's shaken up as he took a shot to the face from Andre Curbelo. That's the second time he's taken one of the chops. First half, he got one from Frazier. And that one from Curbelo. He's got a standing eight count twice in this game. Wow, he is unhappy right now, isn't he? He will stay in the game. Oh, got to get his side of his head. Yep. Curbelo from the free throw line. This is a young man who's going to help the Illini this year, isn't he? Well, he can fill it up. A great passer and a terrific basketball IQ. Just a pure point guard. Flagler fouled by Curbelo. Curbelo's dad played the 1996 Olympic for Puerto Rico with Edgar Padilla. Played at UMass. Remember that backcourt? Beautiful. Padilla and Travieso. Carmelo Travieso. Yes. It was one of the, uh, as, as a play-by-play -play guy, you loved saying Padilla and Travieso. Was that as much fun as Chamwa Chachua? <laughs> Chachua. <laughs> and now Mitchell to the bench. Flagler uses the screen. Talk about a guy who is going to help the Bears. We talked about him coming over from Presbyterian. They just have incredible depth on the perimeter this year. Well, Baylor does such a good job of evaluating talent. Not only high school talent. I was talking with Paul Biancardi about this. who does such a great job with our ESPN 100 and ESPN recruiting about the job that Scott Drew and his staff do in evaluating players. You know, they're not just getting five-star players and, and McDonald's All-Americans, although they do get they do get some. But they've got great transfers. Flagler out of the Big South. Macy Oteague's a Big South guy out of UNC Asheville. Adam Flagler, we mentioned it at Presbyterian, 16 points per game a couple of years ago. I named the Big South Freshman of the Year before transferring to Baylor. So he is a redshirt sophomore, has two more years after this one. You get him an open shot and he knocks it down. set here comes Flagler and Frazier sticking with him over the top Chamwa Chachua kicks it back out and they still got time 12 on the clock Butler around Coburn the feed to Vital and a foul Chamwa Chachua did a great job
of coming to a stop on that ball screen out top. And then he wound up getting to the glass. A lot of big guys, especially young big guys, would set a moving screen there. But he did a great job of getting set in setting that screen and not getting an offensive foul. And then rolls right to the basket, winds up getting an offensive rebound and foul out of it. It's a really good play. He's a big time athlete. Scott Drew describes him as a coach's dream. Got a lot of good energy about him, that's for sure. Got a lot of talent. He started his career at UNLV. And if he can play like this and continue to get better, I mean, he'll be a, a capable replacement. Because Holly Rose right. Like Freddie Gillespie, the loss of Gillespie is huge. Because he averaged 9, 10 rebounds a game. But he also blocked shots, protected the rim, and made up for a lot of defensive mistakes. Miller around and out, and Shamwa Chachua with an energetic rebound. Meyer with a runner. And look who's hitting the deck. Everyday John. Meyer another miss. And Cobert comes down with it for the Illini. Pretty good transition defense there by Baylor to get back. And Jared Butler right there on Trent Frazier to take away any chance for a, a quick shot. And a spirited affair on the court and on the benches as well. Dasumu. And he continues to struggle offensively by his standards. Three for 11, eight points on the night. He's really only had one open shot that I can remember. That's that one in transition early in the second half. Other than that, everything's been challenged with a long arm. What a beautiful play by Macy Oteague. Little hesitation, stutter step, left-handed layup, and Baylor leads by four. Just used one hand and got up, got up off the glass quicker than he, if he brought both hands to the ball. Desumu turns the corner. Miller with a great cut to the basket, but he can't finish. Couldn't finish, he's got fouled. And then at the other end, Butler called for the offensive foul. Frazier stepping in to take the charge. And we have a timeout of the floor with 11-12 to go in the second half between Baylor and Illinois. Look at this beautiful left-handed layup by T. Enjoyed watching Jonathan Chamwa Chachua tonight. And the Baylor Bears and the, certainly enjoyed that alley-oop. Look at the fun that this young man is having. It's been quite a journey for Chamwa Chachua. Born in Cameroon, went to high school in Australia, played as a freshman at UNLV, sat out last year as a transfer, and now is an active player for the Baylor Bears. And are they glad to have him? Well, he's got good energy, doesn't he? He just brings so much energy and athleticism and length. A little one, two, two, three-quarter court pressure. Davion Mitchell with the steal. Mitchell's the one who threw that lob to everyday John. And Teague with another layup to make it a six-point game. As the Bears are really stepping it up defensively right now. <laughs> Illinois needs a bucket badly. Well, Desumu needs to go get him one, but he's really struggled in this game. Three of 11. Mitchell doing a really nice job on him. Frazier banks home a three. What a break for the Illini. They banked one. Bijanishvili banked one from the other side of the court, and then yep. Frazier just balancing it out with another bank. So they get a bucket that they badly needed to try to stem the tide as they cut the lead down to three. You'll get a, a good look at it here. He'll take it, but he didn't mean to do it. How do you know? Oh, I know. Give him some credit. <laughs> John Wooden always said, use the backboard. <laughs> yeah, not from 23 feet. <laughs> Walton did it. Saturday, Justin Fields and Ohio State are in East Lansing to take on a Michigan State squad coming off a big upset of previously unbeaten Northwestern. That's Saturday noon Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Ohio State can't 
can't have another game off the schedule or they're out I believe of the Big you're Ten right. Championship, right? Right. Unless they change the rules. I, I believe you are correct there. And you know what? We'll see the same thing in college basketball. We're going to see at the end of the season, you know, assuming everything goes reasonably well, as well as can be expected. We'll see some teams play in 26 games. Some teams maybe play in 18 games by the time they get to the end of the season. Yeah, but the beauty is we've got a tournament. Right. You can win your way in to yeah. the tournament. You know, football, you know, they have a, they, they select yeah. four teams that they think they think are the best. But the idea that, you know, five, six, seven, and eight can't beat the top four is kind of ludicrous. I saw today something like, I believe, something around 80% of college football games that were on the schedule have been played. And I believe for college basketball, it's 79%, right? And we're only a week in to the college basketball season, but you know, you, I'm sure you see it, I see it, everybody sees it. Just about every day you see this program is going on pause right. for a couple of weeks. Two or three games have to be postponed, rescheduled, and then teams are making up games where wherever they can as everybody tries to balance obviously first and foremost safety and health and then on the next level trying to get some games in and have a reasonably reasonably representative college basketball season well it's stressful i mean you're preparing for a game you think you're going to play i mean baylor thought they were going to connecticut to be in bubbleville right to play against arizona state and then play either against boston college or villanova and baylor has really got it going now Flagler's a heck of a player, especially on the offensive end. And the lead back up to six as we pass the midway point of the second half. When Flagler's open, and he works hard to get open, he is money. One-on-one -on -one to Sumu, and Meyer, I believe, is the one who got a piece of it. And Bamba right there to put pressure on it as well. Flagler again. Long shots, long rebounds. And Baylor has been quicker to those long rebounds. Boy, and Flagler goes right around Cobra. Nothing the big fella could do there, and it's an eight-point lead. Are you trying to close out on a little guy to take away that perimeter shot because he's got that shot credibility. The Bears executing well at the offensive end of it more than anything, playing great defense in this game. Finally, an easy look. Coburn on the feed from Curbelo. I really like Curbelo. With the Long Island Lutheran. Yeah, Adam Miller and Andre Curbelo. That's a that's a pretty good couple of freshmen the line I have right now. Teague again. This time he won't get the roll, but he does get the foul. Yeah, and you added Coleman Hawkins, a freshman yep. as well. Looked like a running back taking that into the lane so he didn't lose it. And then just had the presence of mind to give it up to Coburn for the easy dunk. And when Flagler gets his feet set, he's got a really pretty stroke. <laughs> I got to tell you, this guy, he's oodles of fun, isn't he? Oodles. <laughs> Uh, fourth foul on Kofi Coburn, Mr. Billis, and that's why the seven-footer is heading to the bench right now. They just haven't been able to get as much out of him tonight as they would like. Where does Oodles fall on the metric system scale? Uh, it's between uh, centimeters and millimeters. And I think that's as far down the... Uh, the rabbit hole as we're going on that one. I think, you're, I, I think you've got an oops-a-daisies in you before we're done. A little one, two, two. And they break it rather easily. And Asumu knocks one down. And you wonder now that he's seen one go through the basket if that changes things for him. Boy, Baylor getting down the floor in transition. And Thamba's got a chance for a three-point play. Great advance passing and Flo Thamba just running down the middle of the floor. You know, Desumu, he's had two open shots, both of them in transition from about the same spot. Other than that, he's had a hard time getting anything. But just really poor job in defensive transition of talking to pick up assignments. Bijanishvili's out on the wing. Curbelo, not sure, should he pick up Thamba? Exactly what should happen, just not enough talk. And an offensive rebound on the missed free throw by Davion Mitchell. Got a mismatch with a big fella, Bijanishvili on him. Step back three, got it! 
Boy, are they playing well. He's been punched in the mouth twice. Now yeah. he's punching back. Yeah. Good play by Meyer. And another turnover. Mitchell ahead to Teague for the lay-in. And it's all Baylor right now. Defense turning into offense. And Brad Underwood uses another timeout. What an impressive few minutes for the Baylor Bears at both ends of the floor. Playing with great energy, forcing turnovers, taking advantage of the mismatch, and knocking down the rainbow three. Baylor is up by a dozen right now on Illinois. And Jay, it's gotten even better with the addition of the transfer, Adam Flagler. Yeah, they have added an offensive weapon in Adam Flagler. He's got 14 points, 6 of 10 from the field, 2 of 5 from 3. And over the last 30, 40 seconds, Baylor's on a 7-0 run. They've also hit 4 of their last 4 from the field, but all set up because of their defense. And you can hear not only their defense, you can hear the bench. Yep. With Chamwa Chachua leading the way. And look at the block now by Meyer. Everybody's contributing for the Bears. You know, Dan, defenses that are loud and talking, where the talk is continuous, are really intimidating to play against. And can you have a better 10, 12 seconds than Meyer just had with a block, taking it up the court, and then hitting the bucket at the other end? He plays hard at both ends. And remember last year, we used to think he's a little bit of a wild card on offense but he plays with a lot of passion and he defends much better this season the sumu into the corner curbello knocks down the three well, the thing that impresses you or among the things that impress you about curbello if he makes a mistake he doesn't hang his head he moves on to the next play he doesn't make a lot of mistakes but his his basketball iq is terrific Meyer, nice look to Mitchell. Mitchell drives by Desumu and lays it in easily. Boy, that is way too easy. And now a turnover. Baylor has dominated the last several minutes. The ball is moving, a little skip pass and a drive. And Illinois got caught totally flat-footed. Nobody comes over to challenge this shot by Davion Mitchell. You are not going to see an easier layup except maybe in warm-ups. And Bajanashvili was was in the lane, but kind of stayed with his man instead of coming over to help. Yeah, he's worried about a drop off. Yeah, and you have to you have to rely on your teammates to rotate down. But you got to stop the ball first. You can't worry about a drop off before it happens. And one of the things that that's so interesting about Baylor's defense is they're able to play such great defense, but they don't foul. Flagler for three. Long rebound to Meyer. He'll put it up. Long, wow. Long shots, long rebounds. And Illinois has not been nearly as quick to the ball as Baylor has been on both ends of the floor. Yep. How about Meyer, Jay, with seven points, seven rebounds, and two blocks in 13 minutes of action. Long two, Io DeSumo. One of the things about Matthew Meyer, Scott Drew told me in high school he is criticized for being too passive. He doesn't look passive to me. No, he's he's worked through that issue. <laughs> he's gotten over that, hasn't he? Lob and the finish for Chamwa Chachua. They're just putting Kofi Coburn in as many pick and roll situations as they can because they feel every day John's got better feet and can cover more ground. And it'll go. Bucket and a chance for three. All right, let me ask you this, Jay. As good as Baylor was last season, and they were great last season, won 23 in a row, would have been a one seed, is there a chance they're a better team this year? At the end of the year, I think they could be, yeah. I mean, you know, last year's team was awfully good. Awfully good. And as good as everyday John is and as good as he's going to be, he's going to be outstanding. 
he's not as good right now as Freddie Gillespie was for, right. for the team last year. Yeah. So if you plug Gillespie onto this team again with his ability yeah. to knock down that mid-range shot, because around the free throw line, when Gillespie took that shot, it was money. Yeah. Uh, and he's an excellent defender. We talked about two adding Flagler to the backcourt. That gives him another weapon there. This is, without question, one of the best teams in the country. But it was so much more fun to say Devontae Bandu. Yeah, that's true. How <laughs> about Vital trying a three? Under five minutes to go, and Baylor with a double digit lead. God, every day John is a big guy, but Kofi Coburn makes him look like he's five foot nine. Yeah, he makes him disappear when he posts up in front of him. But Illinois has just not been able to get as many touches, as many rolls to the bucket, as many minutes as they would like out of Coburn. Frazier. have been able to get as many open shots out of Io DeSumo. How about the job Mark Vidal just did switched out on DeSumo? And DeSumo couldn't get past him. He's just so wide and long. He's one of these guys, you know, it's hard to put him in a certain category, put him in a box. He just does, he's a, he's a unique skill set, does a lot of different things and helps you win in a lot of different ways. He's a warrior. Yeah. And I, I think they called him, I remember from last year, they used to call him Baby Rico Gathers. And that's, <laughs> that's a, a good one. Yeah. That's a good, good comparison. Yeah. Because Gathers was another guy who just went to battle every game and never gave an inch. Then played in the NFL, <laughs> which Vital could do. He could he could take a <laughs> shot at that, right? I think he'd more a Canadian football league guy, <laughs> more of a three-down guy than a four-down guy. I thought I think you put him on the Ottawa Rough Riders. There you go. They're not the Rough Riders anymore. If you want to say I'm Rough Riders, you got to say Saskatchewan. You're an old, you're an old, an old school, school CFL guy. guy. <laughs> Vital with an old school game about him. Baylor up a dozen with 4.20 to go. It was back and forth in the first half, but it has been a very impressive performance in the second half by the Bears. Really good spacing by the Baylor offense. Jumper not there, and Asumu down with a rebound. Now they get Coburn free inside and a chance for three. We will go to a timeout in Indianapolis. Well, the Illini needed that spark, but they've still got a lot of work to do in the last 350. Every day, John and his buddies endeavor to raise funds for the V Foundation to support cancer research and you can help out join the fight against cancer at v.org slash donate as you can see all donations go directly to funding cancer research and all the great people at the V Foundation that have done so much work over the years to raise money for cancer research including our our colleague Dick Vitale who's raised millions upon millions yeah. for the V Foundation for pediatric cancer and uh, our hats off as always to, to Dick Vitale and the job that he does in the fight against cancer it's never never ending for him and, and his his passion for the cause never wanes yeah, he has done it through the gala in Sarasota through the sales of books and and just by impressing on so many people the need for more funding for more research in the fight against cancer and one of the founding members of the bald brotherhood who yes. never leave the brotherhood no. like shaka smart did <laughs> Very disappointing that Shaka would go from the clean-shaven look. You know, bit by bit, I mean, we got Coach Greenberg, we got the Fonz now, Dockage has come over to the dark side. we got a lot going for us right now. That was a big get for us to get Dockage, Dockage to, yeah. to yeah. stop swirling that stuff around and come with us. Butler with a handle oh. and a baseline drive. That was beautiful. Beautiful handle, crossover. First points of the second half for Jared Butler. And the pace, you know, the slow to fast. 
Nice little shake there by Desumu. It won't stay down, but there is a foul. Yeah, they call the block on Everyday John. He was there to take the charge, but just tried to slip away from it. And there's no way Bijanishvili is going to stay in front of Butler. Butler knew it and just backed him up, crossed over, and went right by him. I can't imagine there's a much worse feeling than for a big guy out of the perimeter against a great guard when both guys know how it's going to end. It's just a matter of time. I can tell you from experience there's a lot worse feeling. Yeah. And that's getting dunked on by another big guy. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, that's true. But but that big guy for Virginia was 7'4". He, he, he was pretty good. How do you know I'm talking about him? That was just one <laughs> just of the one guys of many. that did it. Hey, coming up after the game, speaking of the ball brotherhood, it'll be Scott Van Pelt on SportsCenter. He'll have some of the top moments from the Jimmy V Classic doubleheader. What we learned from the undefeated Steelers against the shorthanded Ravens and reaction to the big news of the NBA, Russell Westbrook to the Wizards for John Wall. SportsCenter with SVP next on ESPN and the ESPN app. Illinois stepping up the pressure. They got to try to force some turnovers right now. Foul called on Frazier. They had Butler in a, a little trap. It wasn't too far into the coffin corner, but the reach is what got the foul. They had good position. And the officials trying to get the players to their spots as Butler heads to the free throw line. And he misses the front end of the one and one. Look at Coburn up there, set a ball screen. Because Kasumu's, that's a lot to ask yeah. of him to create his own shot. Just bring, bring Coburn up and. Now he drives off the glass, doesn't get the bounce. Been a tough night trying to finish for Ayo Desumu. He's got to get by his primary defender, and then he's got a secondary defender coming over to try to block the shot. And Baylor not in a rush right now. Less than two and a half to go, up by nine. A couple of ball screens on both sides of Miller. The shot will rattle out. Coburn saves it for the Illini. Good job by Vital defensively. And now he retreats to cover Coburn. Miller and Vital comes over to help. Desumu for three. And Flagler went flying, and the foul is going to go on Illinois. Was it Williams that they got? Yeah, it was Williams. The discard. Boy, this has been an awfully impressive 18 minutes or so here in the second half for Baylor at both ends. When you say Baylor's just been so strong, yeah. they've been strong with the ball in the offensive end. And you can't deter them from what they're trying to do. And, and Illinois is a good defensive team. And they've been really strong defensively. And I think with those, the color of those uniforms, they could light a small city. <laughs> a couple of free throws for Flagler. Yeah, you have Baylor in those, and maybe you, you suit up Oregon in some neon green or something, and you don't even need the lights on in the arena. Burn your retinas. And a foul against Flagler, and that's not what Baylor wants to do. You don't want to let him score and stop the clock. Yeah, they're just getting him on these reaches. They're in pretty decent position, but the reaches are what's getting them. So, Curbelo heading to the line for the Illini. You and I will see Illinois again next week as part of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. The Illini will be at Cameron Indoor Stadium to take on Duke. Yeah, the second Big Ten opponent they're going to have in a week. You were there last night as Michigan State beat Duke. What did you make of that win for the Spartans? Well, both teams, it was difficult to score. Michigan State had a, had a rough start to the game. Uh, they had a lot of turnovers, and they fouled a ton to start, but after they settled down, 
I was really impressed. Michigan State's another really good defensive team. I mean, the Big Ten is going to be backyard brawl yeah. after backyard brawl. They're going to be a couple of really good teams who finish like ninth and 10th in that league. Exactly. And, and, you know, we didn't even talk before when we were mentioning all those names about, you know, Michigan's going to be good. Rutgers is going to be good. You know, if Baylor just takes care of business at the free throw line, they're going to walk out of Indianapolis with a very impressive win. Yeah, just don't give up for Baylor. Obviously, as you say, make your free throws and then don't give up threes. Threes and second shots, and you don't want to foul. Mitchell misses the first. There aren't that many on-ball defenders that are as good as Davion Mitchell. There are others in his class, but man, he gets low and he's got so much leverage with all that strength. Ten-point game. Well, and it's a it's a team too that takes you can see they take an incredible amount of pride in the defense they play. Yes, and it, it's a collective pride, and they're excellent help defenders as well. But they don't have to help as much as some other defenses because they guard the ball so well. Yeah. I mean, the very best defenses don't have to help much because they contain the ball. And these guys, they take away transition, they get back five as one communicate really well and they limit you to one shot shot clock at five Mitchell for three the exclamation point perhaps on a great evening for the Bears he has had some game seven assists a couple of steals 15 points Hadn't missed a three. Did he four or four from three? Dusumu has it knocked away. He is four or four from three-point range. Curbello. Can't get it to go. Good defense by Butler. 40 seconds to go. And the Baylor Bears, ranked second in the country, are going to get a win against Illinois. And what a matchup they figure to have on Saturday. It's going to be Baylor and Gonzaga. The two teams who won tonight, they're sticking around in Indy to play Saturday afternoon. Mitchell again. Shot clock turned off. Curbelo will get an uncontested layup. That should just about do it. The Bears will inbound, and they are going to foul with 8.4 seconds to go. It's a lot of days in a hotel. In Indy for these Indy guys? For these guys. Yeah. Because it's not like you're going to be, you know, congregating and hanging out. Nope. Road trips now are players having basically in their rooms. Yep. And the travel party in their rooms. Yep. Sure, you meet in a ballroom for a walkthrough or a practice, and you're at the gym. But and I mean the court when I say the gym. But other than that, like everybody who's traveling, you're in your rooms. I guess the truth is not that much different from being at home because you're. All these teams are isolated yeah. when they're at home. I mean they're basically in mini bubbles anyway. What a performance by the Baylor Bears. 82-69 over Illinois. Gonzaga beat West Virginia in the first game. Little forearm bump there from a couple of guys who have known each other for a long time in Scott Drew and Brad Underwood. Baylor beats Illinois. Coming up next, it's SVP for Jay Billis and Holly Rowe. I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching. Time now to send it to SportsCenter.